Welcome back to John's Films. Today is the 3090. Today is the day we're dropping the big granddaddy of them all graphics card. We have a Palette Gaming Pro OC card that we are testing with A2K Technologies. A2K is a channel over in Singapore. Please swing over and say thanks. They did a fantastic job by caring about the DaVinci Resolve community and making sure that we have benchmarks that we can understand. If the 3090 release is anything like the 3080 release, this is the only channel you're going to see DaVinci Resolve benchmarks on the new cards on. So please click subscribe below so that you can continue to catch this great coverage. And let's go check out the numbers. Let's look at the configuration today. We have an Intel 10 700K overclocked on all cores to 5.1 gigahertz, a DaVinci Resolve Studio 16.2 install running the Puget Systems 0.6 beta benchmark. Big thanks to them for building this for the community. We have an NVIDIA 2080 Super FE. That's Founders Edition. We have an ASUS Tough RTX 3080. Same as last week. And now we've got a Palette RTX 3090 Gaming Pro OC card. This thing is actually only four millimeters longer than my 2080 Ti. So this is probably the most compact 3090 you can find on the market. Let's get to the testing. Now, when we look at it overall, I'm just going to take the 10700K results and look at it across each of the codecs. Notice the RTX 3090, not a huge step up. The compute layer does give us a benefit. The extra CUDA cores are paying off. I don't think we're flexing the memory yet, though. I think we'd have to go to 8K testing to do that. If we look at one of the major influences, though, those tests aggregate about five different tests. And two of them, basic grading and optimized media, check this out, almost zero difference. Why? Because this is all being done, with the exception of the H.265 and H.264, all of it's being done in the CPU. We're not even stretching the legs of this fantastic graphics card. But if we jump over to the GPU results, here you'll see a bit more of a difference. I'm not saying it's the best thing in the world, Honestly, you're getting maybe a 20% uptick in GPU-only effects, and that's generous. I'm measuring this in frames per second. You're going from 9 frames per second on 3x temporal noise reduction to 12. So, yeah, what are you going to do? Huh. Y yeah, so... Um Maybe it, it, it's maybe it's not fifty percent faster, or thirty percent faster, or um. Well, but the pri Yeah. All right. So here's what's really going on. This is a card that gets if the leaked benchmarks would be delivered. 10 to 15% uplift in your generic 4K, 1440p gaming. And there's a reason for that. The extra RAM, the extra CUDA cores, seem to, instead of driving frame rates, drive the ability for larger textures and bigger resolutions. That's why you've seen Linus Tech Tips throw down on an 8K OLED display happily above 60 frames. I think what we're really going to see with this card is it's exactly what NVIDIA says it's for, which is the AI community, um, large data set crunching, the 24 gigabytes of GDDR6X is going to be used in convolutional networks where we've got a whole bunch of images loaded in for analysis, rather than how fast can we just slam pixels to a screen. With us looking at it from a DaVinci Resolve perspective, you have to really understand what part of your workflow gets done by the graphics card and what part of your workflow gets done inside the CPU still. Um, that's a big variance. For those of you that have watched the channel before, free, a lot more happens inside the CPU, specifically around H.264, H.265 work. Now, when you're looking forward to what can we expect to see continue to grow and, and benefit inside Resolve from this card? The answer is everything that you've seen attached to the neural engine. 
where you've seen the releases in DaVinci Resolve's release notes that say, oh, yep, we updated for the NVIDIA Studio Driver, the Studio Driver, our optical flow slow motion is now using the neural engine. That's going to run much faster. When you look at the uh, super sampling, again, much faster. When you look at uh, some of the GPU effects, the extra CUDA cores will benefit it, but we really don't have a definitive way yet to measure that exact break between uh, GPU accelerated effect benefit compared to um, from, from generation to generation. Anyway, long ramble to say I'm absolutely thrilled that the new cards are here. I do think that at $1,500, it's probably not a let's go buy it for Resolve card. I do think that if you're editing an 8K, then yeah, go get it. If you're on the 6K B-RAW, I believe B-RAW is optimized enough. Even the 12K B-RAW is going to be optimized enough. With DaVinci Resolve, you'll get by just fine on a 3080. I think the bigger textures in Fusion, if you're going nuts on that, probably the bigger textures and whatnot, Hey, 24 gigabytes of VRAM, I'd, I'd love to have it. I'd love to have my timeline load up into it as I'm doing my work and never, ever see anything ever close to known as buffering or choppy playback. I think we can achieve that 95% of the time with the 3080, and we don't need to step up to the 3090. Frankly, what I'm waiting for is, if it's true, the leak that says that there's a 3080 coming with 20 gigabytes of VRAM. That might be my sweet spot, and that might be the upgrade point for me for my 2080 Ti. Thank you all for watching. Please click subscribe. Really thrilled to have you to the channel. And let me know if you got questions you'd like researched. I love researching this technology stuff, and thanks for watching. Have a great day.